Hello and welcome to another installment of another cybersecurity workshop under the Q project at UC Merced. This workshop is part of the workshop series known as Cybersecurity Pocket Edition Workshop Series. And we love to have you here. And so I'm going to begin with today's workshop topic known as certificate pinning. So why are we talking about certificate pinning? Uh, certificate pinning is was actually deprecated in Chrome version 69. <clears throat> and we're currently in the realm of version 86. Um, just to let you know that technology moves very fast and there's always protocols coming up and then there's protocols going down, becoming deprecated. This everything is moving so fast because everyone has access to internet. Everyone has access to everything and it's constantly changing and evolving really fast, exponentially fast. I'm sure you guys know about Moore's law where technology is growing at an exponential rate. So um, if certificate pinning is deprecated, why are we learning this? Um, it's just to, to show how current technologies, especially during the time when um, this was taught as a security measure could and will be exploited by hackers. And so just because you're told something is secure doesn't mean it is. On the right, I have an image based of all the protocols that was used to identify nodes of the internet. So um, you can see that we're using ICP or IPv4 here. Um, if you guys can see my cursor and some other protocols that are used um, or TCP and still being used. Um, you can see that IPv5 started actually in like October of 1990 and then it just died at October <clears throat> 1995. And then we started with IPv6 at this point. So you can see the evolution of technology, how some started, some died, some started long back and they're still going and then new technologies such as IPv6 are still getting implemented. So what is certificate pinning? Um, it's also known as HTTP public key pinning. Um, this is a header that you usually put in um, when in your web application, when you're sending, when the server is sending the client its server um, page or something. We'll go over that a little bit later. Um, this was developed specifically to avert man in the middle attacks. It was a security feature that used to tell the client to associate a public key that was um, created cryptographically, like usually RSA. And it was designed to tell the client that this key is tied to a specific website server. So whenever the client would connect to this server, it would double check the public key with the public key it has cached from this very first time. And this implements a trust on first use technique. So whatever the server gets or wherever the client gets the key from the very first time, it considers that key as the trusted key. Um, usually, the, so the main idea behind certificate pinning is that um, since Public keys were the public keys were wrapped in the certificate authority of the website. Basically, uh, um, background to CA certificate authority. Basically, um, it's supposed to give you that S secure kind of um, system in HTTPS and make your website or tell the browser that this content, website content came from the actual um, website server that you asked, requested it from. So for example, the bank, uh, say Bank of America. So Bank of America has its own CA. And so when the browser, well, when you request the Bank of America's website, it returns the web content plus a CA. So the, C, so the browser knows that this content came from um, Bank of America servers since because of the CA. So moving on. Um, however, if a hacker was able to compromise the CA, 
then they could have access to the entire, um, all the clients trying to connect to it. And so they would, the hacker would be able to perform a man in the middle attack. And so to avoid this, um, HPKP was designed to, as a second measure to um, prevent all of these um, CA that have been hacked. And it was designed to tell the web client to associate the specific website content to a specific public key so that if a CA was abused or hacked, the client would get a warning saying that this website is not from the specific web server because the public keys that um, you had that the client had did not match the public key that the website server sent. So this is basically a quick overview of how it was. So client sends um, a request, the server sends the response along with all the cer server certificates and the public key. And then um, on the client side, it calculates the hashing, matches the hashing. And then um, at this point, it looks at the pinning. So whether the um, public key matches what the client has in the very beginning, if not, then you reject it. So what could go wrong? So um, in the very first line, I have what needs to be in the header of when you're sending the um, server content back to the user. This is to tell you that um, there's a, you need to pin the public key that comes in this um, server um, content, website content. Um, this is the, the pin SHA-256 key fingerprint, which tells you that this is the actual website content from this server. So you can't, so no one else can um, mimic it. And this is the max age. This is actually the number of milliseconds or seconds in a year. So 365 days. Um, sometimes, so some things that could go wrong include denial of service and hostile pinning. So malicious hackers can cause you not to go to certain websites by setting your specific website HPKP policy. Um, the, uh, sometimes that um, to avoid this, the pin SHA-256 is used, but sometimes of course hackers can DDoS um, or just guess this um, key fingerprint or sometimes it's sometimes leaked. Like on the bottom here, I say where the key is leaked and so the hacker can easily take that and then um, at, tell all the clients or tell everyone saying that this is the key for the bank. But whenever the bank sends the actual true correct information, the client will reject it because um, of the key it has saved, the public key has saved. Um, sometimes even this, even when hackers aren't um, doing anything, there can still be some misuse with this. Uh, for example, there's a Smashing Magazine website. Um, they sent, they had a HK, HPKP policy beforehand, and then they switched to a new website. And so they had to send, they had to set a new HPKP policy. Uh, and they set it for 365 days for the new website. And then they sent it to all their clients, but the old users, could not use a new website because their HPKP policy from the old website, which Smashing Magazine sent, was not expired. So there's no way to update these old HPKP policies. So this was a pretty um, bad t thing because they all clients could not use the website anymore. Um, in general, this whole um, surf certificate pinning HPKP policies were dropped, deprecated because the risk was greater than the actual reward what this security me mechanism gave. So statistics from Google showed that the changing of keys posed a higher risk than the actual security provided by HPKP. So every time a certificate authority had to be reissued, there would be a new public key. And so they had to um, 
the web server had to give all its clients new policies, tell them to delete their policies and stuff. It was a big mess. And so um, when a CA revokes your certificate, sometimes you audit like, like a misspelled name, um, you have to give a, your new certificate um, public key through the HPKP policy to all your clients again. And this, this was a big issue because you didn't, you need to update the HPKP policy from your client section, your client side. And that was a big pain, doable, but um, it was just a big hassle you had to undergo. Um, the standard, by the way, for when your CA revokes your certificates and gets you new ones, um, it's about five days. So they give you five days to tell your clients to get a new cert. Um, some more background into certificate pinning. So, or just certificates in general. Certificate pinning happens at the LEAF certificate. Um, there's a chain of certificates that go into a website's content when the server is sending it to the client. Um, the certificate pinning happens at the high, or happens at the leaf node, but which is at the very bottom. And this is assuming we're going from top to bottom. And so if you did certificate pinning at higher levels, like the root or the intermediate CAs, they, in the trust chain of certificates for the website, this allows for more, uh, for a stronger guarantees of the content being from where it says it is from. Um, it's also very difficult to choose a valid key to pin since verifying from the leaf to the root gets really hard and complex due to the inconsistent nature of how everything is stored because the root CA, um, the people who issue that might have different storing mechanisms than the intermediate ones. And then finally at the leaf ones, there's different ones. And this could lead to many different trust chain issues. Um, some trust chain trust chain issues were that um, some websites when sending the certificates, there might be missing intermediate certificates so that there's no trust path established between the leaf and the root node. And so that's um, a problem because you can't um, give that lock on that website content because there's no trust path between the leaf and the root node. Also, sometimes certificate chains are too long and certain browsers or sites allow only for a certain number known as a threshold uh, before calling the chain as misconfigured. And then even if they allowed for this, it could also lead to performance issues because the browser has to calculate each of the certificates. And so if it's a big number, it's gonna take a long time. So a solution to certificate pinning that has been introduced when it was deprecated was certificate transparency. So the main idea behind certificate transparency is that when a certificate is issued, it gets appended to a cryptographically verified public, publicly auditable log. Uh, and this uses a Merkle tree to store all the different um, certificates that have been issued to all the websites. And this can actually be operated by anyone, but of course it takes a lot of resources and often big companies handle this. Um, so when you open a website, uh, you can submit a um, certificate to be publicly issued or publicly, sorry. Um, you could submit it to the Merkle tree to ver get it verified, your CA, and then it returns a signed certificate timestamp and known as an SCT. And this is what you get to the web client through the server content. And then the browser at the web client side looks at this SCT and then it goes to the log, the Merkle tree where you submitted your first um, CA and it verifies whether this is actually um, submitted in the Merkle tree. And if it is, and if it was issued correctly, 
then the browser says, okay, this content came from this web server. Um, this verification happens at the level of granularity of the certificate and the trust chains. And this allows the website servers or the website operators not to specify each of the certificate in the trust chain, trust chain in the actual uh, website content or in the headers and stuff. Um, this certificate transparency, there's a lot of things I could talk about, but I'm going to talk about this in a different workshop, hopefully. And there's lots of advantages and disadvantages to using this. And I think, I think it's currently used in this um, time, but I'm still not sure. So maybe uh, another workshop will clear that up. And so that's it, the end. Um, I just want to show you one more thing. So I'm on my um, google.com slides um, website right here. So you guys can see this, right? Yeah. Okay. So if I click on this lock, you can see it's asking for my location. The connection is secure right here. If you go to a certificate, you can see that this, this right here, this is the, the leaf certificate right here, this, you can, it's kind of like a certificate, actual certificate issued to google.com. And google.com, if you're using certificate transparency would give me the SCT, SCT and then it would, um, I would take this and go to Merkle tree and then get all this information saying that, oh, it's um, verified right here, key usage, all this right here. Um, also some other things, this is, known as the Intermediate Certificate Authority, right here. Uh, and then Global Sign is the Root Certificate Authority. So there's something cool to check out whenever you visit a website. So does anyone have any questions? Are you able to explain more what the Merkle tree is? Of course. So. The Merkle tree is kind of like a binary-ish kind of tree, which allows you to submit a CA for public verification. And Merkle tree is basically a log of that, except it's stored in a cryptographic way. So that's easy to um, insert. It's e easy to um, get whenever you're searching for a tree. So, a specific value, for example, when web clients are connecting or get the SC team, you want all of them to have fast um, lookup times. So you want a data structure that allows for super fast lookup times for these web clients to actually get there um, to double check this content, the SCT. And so uh, binary uh, Merkle tree is used because it provides fast in, um, lookup times and plus it's publicly auditable, it's publicly auditable and it's a log of all the submitted CAs. And I mentioned this before, it's um, cryptographically managed or it's cryptographically made and it's, yeah, that's it. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, uh, thank you for coming to this workshop and I hope you guys have a great day.